7 o'clock, roll call, call to order. Terry and Dana are not present. Are you going to lead us in prayer? Sure, go by your head with me. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather here this evening, we ask that you show us guidance and be with us as we make these decisions. Watch over our children and our staff of the district. And Father, we ask that you, that you lay your healing hands on Mr. Glover and know that he is in our prayers. In your name we pray, amen. Honors and recognition. <coughs> None. Public participation. None. Discussion, possible action on the minutes of the August 5th, 2024 regular board meeting and the August 12th, 2024 special board meeting. I move to approve both sets of minutes. Second. All those in favor? Motion passes. Discussion, possible action on the following 2024, 2025 encumbrances. One, general fund encumbrances. Two, co-op fund encumbrances. Three, building fund encumbrances. Four, child nutrition fund encumbrances. Five, change order listings in general co-op building and child nutrition. Six, the treasury report. Seven, activity fund custodian report. I didn't bring my notes, <clears throat> apparently, but uh, I talked to Don a little bit, and uh, it does sound like the 1410 will get 20 for Hartzell's. We should get like 26 or something of that back. Yes. But that'll be next month for the credit back to the Heritage. Okay. And then we have the 125 for Heritage to replace the ACs. And that is still on. Schedule. You guys are still cool right now. I think that was all that I I, I had them on highlighted. But <clears throat> good. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, item E. I'll second it. All those in favor? Motion passes. Discussion possible action for the following contracts for the 2024-2025. Cornerstone Counseling Consulting, Shamrock Counseling Services, Tiffany Jenkins, Encouraging Words, Academic Language Therapy, and Precision Speech Therapy. These are all, you said one of them was new. Uh, precision speech therapy is new. Um, she just came in to help fill caseload. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, she's just working today. Yeah, she's part time. Okay. I make a motion that we approve item F. A second. All those in favor? Motion passes. Discussion possible action for the school site statutory waiver exemption application for the 2024-2025 school year. Can you want to elaborate on that? What that is is every year when we do our parent teacher conferences, because we do it in the evening and not during the daytime, okay. we have to file a waiver with the okay. State Department on that. So okay. that's what that is. I remember that now. I'll make a motion that we approve that. I second. All those in favor, motion passes. Discussion possible action on the following fundraiser requests. One, Q STEM. Two, softball. Three, cheer. Four, speech and debate. I make a motion that we approve the fundraisers as listed. All a second. All those in favor, <coughs> motion passes. I discussion possible action on the district alternative education plan. That's something we just know with the state every year, right? Yes. Okay. I make a motion to I so move. Second. All those in favor? Motion passes. Discussion possible action on the position statement regarding SDE guidelines for Bible in schools. 
Is this based on the guidance that we've had from our OSSBA? Yes. I'll make a motion that we approve that. I second. All those in favor? Motion passes. Discussion, possible action on the estimate of needs for the 2024-2025 school year as prepared by Britton Kirkendall Miller and approved by the Kingfisher County Excise Board. <clears throat> yeah. um, this has really been a uh, trying thing to try to figure out how the school, I think the board to everybody has uh, really tried to uh, find a way to eliminate the possibility of this hitting our uh, landowners in this district. And so we've exhausted efforts of, uh, you know, when we, when we first said that we were just gonna try to pay this on, a, on an annual basis, uh, we were met with some, uh, uh, some laws that prevent us from being able to use that. The commissioners uh, were not able to accept that money. And so then we waited we try to make one more payment at the end of the year before it was assessed to the homeowners and uh, the treasurer could not legally uh, no fault to anyone here they just they couldn't pay that so then we get into this year and we can't pay it and so uh, we've been trying to work with the excise board on trying to find out how we can uh, adjust our budget to offset this and there's been quite a few trials with those uh, with those about <clears throat> Uh, whether we can, whether it's going to be paid from the sinking fund or um, how that money can be can be done, and so this has been has been quite a uh, uh, it's qu quite an effort, and so um, I I think that basically if we were to try, I, I still believe it's the the goal of the board. Um, I did we did ask. I think we're still waiting on the final. Uh, we have not heard back. I have not seen anything in writing from our attorney, correct? No, nothing but, yet. I've been talking was, with them um, throughout the last week and still waiting on a final answer from, from them on what the board can. So my, so basically in doing all of that, my understanding is that moving money to the sinking fund um, is not maybe something that we could do, which would be a play on words. However, uh, uh, that <clears throat> I do have that number that the uh, the CPA presented to us was a 12.96 mil reduction. Uh, they presented us with a estimate of needs with a 12.96 mil reduction, um, and so my uh, in in doing the discussion uh, with uh, my individual counsel and those things would be that uh, in order to offset the levy that's going to be paid that we propose to modify our budget to just reduce our general fund by the 12.96 mills. And if we reduce our budget by the 12.96 mills, then everything would, uh, in effect, um, when, the, when the levy is added back, it would be a net zero and the school will have uh, been able to pay our, uh, will have been able to pay for the first year of this on our own in addition to other things we've done, such as the uh, efforts at Gilmore. <clears throat> um, so that would be my proposal, is that we just simply reduce our our uh, estimate of needs by the 12.96 mil and submit that general fund uh, estimate to the excise board. We don't have legal counsel saying we can do this, though. Correct? Uh, the, the, the legal counsel that represents this board. Correct. So uh, we reached out and we're talking over the past week. I did not, uh, <clears throat> I have not seen back from him a uh, answer. However, I have, uh, in my case, I have provided my own counsel who has uh, provided that. So I, I'm not saying you guys have to be, I am comfortable with that, but that would be up to you guys to, uh, to discuss the rest of that. I, I have not heard back from, uh, we presented this, I think, was it Wednesday or Thursday to Eric? Yeah. <clears throat> Thursday, I've talked to him since, since last Thursday. And he's currently working on it, but I don't think he's gonna have anything for us today. Um, Are you comfortable um, tabling it till we hear back from him? 
that's I mean, I, I just, think I we think should <laughs> table it for a special meeting later before the excise board meets on the 18th, I believe, and we can get it finalized by then. With our legal counsel? Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not saying, okay. I'm I not doubting your legal counsel, it's just I get it. the board has to. Yep. I've opinion. never, I don't ever want to pressure you into doing it. I, I'm just, I'm basically saying that that would be, but <clears throat> we're happy to run that fast. So I make a motion we table this until we can get with our legal counsel and reconfirm with maybe the attorney general as well. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Motion passes. Do we know when we would be able to? Jim, you guys have a meeting on the 18th, is that right? Excuse me. You, you, you guys have a meeting on the 18th, is that correct? Uh, next Wednesday, yes, sir. Okay. okay. So you, it would be in your preference to have this prior to that? Having a budget prior to that? Yeah. Having our that, approved that's when, estimate. That's when, you guys, that's when you guys are looking to finalize the majority of your budgets, correct? Yes. Okay. So we just have to have 48 hours notice and whenever we can all, when we can get a quorum to meet, we'll set a date. And a time what are the meet. date, what are the, would, would is, is, uh, are they both gone all week or if we did something like Friday or Thursday or something? I, mean, I can meet Friday. I can meet Friday. Okay. Tentatively Friday at noon, yeah. is that what you think? Okay. It's the 13th. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we can set the time. Okay. Earlier. We might have to go earlier, so hold off on earlier in the in the in the day. I mean, okay. I might have to go 11:30 because it's going to conflict. I do. I, I would like to add to that that uh, in an effort of of. Uh, transparency to anybody watching on the video or um, or here uh, we have talked with the principals of what that would look like and our budget last year our spend was about 23.1 million dollars that was spent uh, last year uh, if we were to use our carryover um, this year to if we were to use our carryover and get the millage with this reduction would put our budget, our total budget, at about 14.5. Uh, so it's about a $9 million reduction in uh, funds available to the school, which is a very substantial uh, hit from our spending last year. Uh, so I would say that <clears throat> I have, we have visited with Don and that it is something that could be done, but it is uh, something that would take everybody's part to make that uh, Possible. It is a big. It is a big hit, but we can do it, and we can make it work. Well, discussion, possible action on the following certified personnel contracts: Dan Bivin, Stan Bundell, Derek Patterson, Amy Pearson, Reagan Roof, Kevin Yagley, and Taylor Young. You have information for us on that. I have printed off some um, information for you that uh, <clears throat> some of last year's um, stipends and then this year's, I don't know if this will help, but I think there are some other um, information there um, that um, is, been, is needed. <clears throat> I didn't know specifically who. That was just a section, I just printed off a section of the stipends that included most of these people. Um, with adjustments to with, it? With some adjustments to that would, um, from conversations with Mr. Glover on how their contracts and discussions with them previous when some of them were hired. Uh, a couple of them had stipends that were left off the stipend list that was presented to you in August. Uh, specifically, ninth grade football stipends were left off. Um, that was um, going back and looking. That was on that was on me. That was a clerical error on me. Those are left off the, the list to begin with. Um, 
So that would affect Stan Bodell, Derek Patterson, and Reagan Roof. Um, those are on there, so that would be a, a no change from last year. Uh, uh, okay. And some of those, um, I don't know some of the details of the conversation, like Coach Yegley. Um, I don't know some of the details of, of his. Okay. So he is not on that list I gave you. Um, but <clears throat> I know uh, in Dan Bivens and Amy Pearson, I don't know. I think there's are some maybe new positions. Uh, Bivens is. Bivens is a speech and debate where uh, you go around, we would be placed in 5A, class 5A, and we'd go compete with other schools and debate. And uh, Heather and I did some research, uh, other schools around us, and, and, and f found a number that uh, other schools are paying uh, their sponsors. And I think, is that included, Heather, in their stuff? I'm not, uh, I'm not I don't see that. No, that's not on there. Okay. I, I didn't know they would be on there. I don't know. I, I think Amy's is in the first category that you said, Stuart, as far as <laughs> something other agreed upon or something. Yeah. Possibly. Again, I, I didn't know exactly the names specifically that would be on the list. So, so a like Amy and. So Amy's Stuco. Correct. She's, Stuco and then Bivens are the ones we are unsure on, right? Well, Bivens is speech and debate, and we're not unsure about him. He's he's well, doing that class. So right. this, you guys need so to when we, be yeah. sure about it. Yeah. Yeah, we're unsure what he she he was. We know where he's placed, but we're just unsure what he was told, right? I he, no, he hasn't had a conversation with Glover. So okay. my, my question on that, with Bivens being the first one here on the list, is that uh, he was. I have. I went and. We have, from last time, we have last year's versus this year's full uh, extra duty. Bivens was not presented on the list anywhere when it was presented to us. Correct. This, is a, new, this is a new course. Okay. It was not taught last year. Okay. That's, yeah, that's why he would not be on the list. You're right. So, so this is something that was that was authorized by Mr. Harris, and it just did not make it. And this was after the after this was this was this offer was made to him after this was presented. After the work sheet was presented, you know, the extra duty was voted on in August. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that was put in over the summer. That class was added over the summer. Yeah, and and he's agreed to do it without. Uh, extra duty stipend, but it's not right, in my my opinion. No, I, I think the board is just of a deal. Like our, we just talked about the budget and how our budget's going to be considerably less, and so it's just that we want to make sure that when we went through it, that we want to make sure that extra duty is for extra duty, and so uh, and so uh, I I would. Say yes, sir. He he will be loading us kids in a van and going to schools and competing. With his group in speech and debate, Lincoln Douglas debate. I would, I would agree with you. Uh, we're not that we don't need to pay a few more things that they're not doing. Right. Okay. okay so, so, and that said, I think what's the second one on here? The second one is uh, Stan Blundell uh, in the extra duty discussion. Uh, Stan was removed from the AD position. Assistant AD so, wasn't on there for us to approve. Right. Okay. And so, is he? Has he been? Was he notified that he's not the athletic director anymore? He's saying that his contract is less, uh, but we took that off of his plate. Was that communicated to him? Uh, yes, but he is still acting in that role. Um, he's very much acting in that role. And he was. I mean, it was communicated to him prior. That, that would be some one of his duties, and when it was taken off of his plate, he's but at the at the August first meeting, it was removed from the from the duty, and school started when 12th. the twelfth. So, how how was this communicated to him that he was not in the there's no the AD role I mean, that it was not approved. Still doing it. Well, it's not that it wasn't approved. It wasn't. He wasn't listed on the assistant AD one that we got to approve. 
that that position was taken off. There was nobody slotted in there for the assistant AD position, the one that was given to the board. So it's not like we made the decision that he wasn't going to be the assistant AD. There was nobody listed for the assistant AD that Mr. Glover communicated to me that he had taken that off because he felt you were competent to cover all the AD stuff on your own. When we got when we got this, that was taken off as well as the pre post games AD of 1500 uh, for three individuals. There's 1500 taken off for three individuals, which would equate to a. Um, I actually don't understand where Stan is having a 4,000 shortfall because when you take the activity act assist, assistant AD off and you take the pre post games AD off, that is a $9,000 uh, reduction in that pay. But he's saying he's only 4,000 short, so I don't know if we added something back to him. Well, we um, girls wrestling. Girls wrestling had a head coach increase. Right, which was a $5,000. We added as a girls head wrestling coach. Okay. 5,000 for him. Okay, so if we go to the extra duty discussion, extra duty. Okay, so when Mr. Glover and I went through the extra duties, Stan was still listed as the assistant AD. That's where I'm confused. Okay. So I think there's the miscommunication between me and Okay. You. So so my question would be, and this Stan's a great guy, I have nothing and I and I think honestly I'd like to apologize to anybody that had a shortfall on this on their uh, on their uh, contracts here, but Stan has a uh, if he was on there as an extra duty for the uh, AD there's an extra duty for baseball. There's an extra duty for foot, a couple extra duties for football and an extra duty for wrestling. So these are all extra duties, right? So what is the base? He was based out. For, for, for what? Like he's not in a classroom, right? So these are all extra duty pays. What's the base for? For is That's a valid question. Okay, we asked that question, um, and we were um, we asked that question before the decision was made to remove the AD role. We asked that dis that very the board asked that question as to what his base was, and we were not able to um, receive an answer. So I would say that. I would ask the administration to find out what, before we pay all the extra duty, what is the base for, and then we'll discuss what extra duties are due. Would, who would be having, who would need to have that discussion with Mr. Blundell? Well, I think we need to see what Mr. Glover said to him too. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Yes, that, so those, those are conversations for the majority of these people that were had, okay, so and they were told a, a dollar amount. Mm -hmm. So this arrangement with Stan on his deal was all a Mr. Glover discussion. Because the majority of these persons, not probably not just Coach Fondette, okay. that they were told a dollar amount. So I would ask. Too I would, dumb to work. I would agree with Carly. I would agree with Carly that we could probably talk with Mr. Glover and find out that. But in a case where we're taking a shortfall in that, like that. Right. In this amount of money, uh, uh, we we should probably know what that is to be before we vote on that. So I would, I would, uh, I, can we get followed up with that? Yeah. So, so, so uh, I would say most of these people would fall in that category. That, like I said, they were promised an, an X amount of dollars for their job, whether it's base, extra duty, whatever. <coughs> that is not what their contract said. Okay. So, so if we those went, conversations would need to happen with the person, the people that had that conversation to begin with, right. which and, was not y'all and, and was not me. And they're not here. So we need to figure out that conversation. So if we go to the next one, being Derek Patterson. Um, his his I, was the ninth grade football. Right, and the f f summer football camp, which I want right. to clarify that we did confirm the summer football camp 
for this summer was paid last year. So the money that is the 1875 that was removed from extra duty this year is for next summer. And that is in advance because football, and this was also something by uh, Glover that we, that we were taking this off because this was the only sport that received a summer camp stipend to make this happen. And that would be in time to maneuver that, uh, that they could either charge the kids in the way that the basketball or others do, or they could make some changes. And I believe in discussion with Mr. Roof is that they are going to look at some avenues as to how we to do that. We already had those discussions. Okay, so, so the football, the summer camp, we're all on the same page as next summer, and we're working towards some other result for that. Yes. This is on the ninth grade football. Yes. Okay, so on that, my, my question on that is that in last year, it showed, if, if you compare last year's, last year showed uh, ninth grade head, ninth grade assistant, ninth grade assistant. That was Derek Patterson as the ninth grade head, Jeff Myers as ninth grade assistant, and Stan Blundell as ninth grade assistant. Those positions were all removed. There was nothing on this on this Clear week, on this year's deal. My, on my part. And they were all put on junior high Foot, there was that there was just four junior high football, whereas that was last year that was put something. In a discussion with Roof, that was a discussion about maybe trying to make it to where that it <clears throat> it appeared to, uh, well, I, in talking with him, I don't think he ever got the ability to see these, this breakdown of how the football money was being spent. Correct? No, he has seen it. Before now, I was sent to us. not previously. Not he's in it now, but he didn't see it beforehand. When well, he, he and I discussed it. He and I have, seen, have discussed it, and he and I have looked over it. Maybe not the exact dollar amounts, and who, and, but he and I have discussed. It. Well, I mean, before uh, prior to August first when we approved it. So he and I, he and I went through it this summer. See you. And now I went through with all the head coaches on yes, how their sports are are broken down. This so who so who would have had the discussion with Derek Patterson for the ninth grade football uh, for the change in that prior to prior to uh, the contracts being sent out? It was a clerical error that I left it off. <coughs> okay. It should have been on the thing that you guys approved. Okay. It got it got removed on okay. accident. So those three stipends. Okay. With that being said. I think that I would ask Carly and Charles that we asked to see the extra duty and agree on it last year in May so that we could see what was being negotiated and we were told that we couldn't vote on it until, on July, until July. And that has put a point where people are getting stuff promised that is later the board is not, maybe there's not authorization or clerical error. I would error, agree so, that it needs to be. So I would ask both. that we do that in the, like I if we can. I would agree that it needs to happen earlier in the year too. Okay. So, uh, so this was so this one, this one for uh, for Derek was authorized by yourself for the ninth grade. Well, that's been that was been on there. That Derek's ninth grade football was not on the new one. I'm saying that that was you're saying that that that, that was authorized by you to be on this year's in the clerical. It was supposed to come to supposed to have been on there. Right. It, it should have just carried over. Okay. From last year to this year, same as the two assistants. Okay. It, it was not even a new change. It should have just carried over. Um, to I, move along, I think that we need to, to table these right now, and I think that we need to get a amended extra duty list with the reflected changes. That way we can look at it. Like Friday. I, I'm good with that. I have a question for one more just because I, I think there's a few questions that need to be. You said that Amy Pearson was like, uh, uh, was Glover was going to check on it. Um, the the, uh, the one I want to ask on was for Kevin Eagley. So uh, Kevin had extra duty for uh, Summer Pride for $10,000. And he had another uh, $5,000 extra duty for weight room. Uh, what was that 5000 in the weight room? Do you know what that was for? 
No. That was why. Oh. That was Glover as well. That was he did it in a zero hour. <coughs> Correct. He yes. was he was before school started. I know he had kids. Zero hour. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I would ask you guys to check because there is an additional salary added for the zero hour and then another 5000 on top of that as to how that, what that extra 5000 is the extra duty to do on that as well. Okay. And then uh, Taylor Young, uh, whose discussion was that with Taylor? That would be Mr. Glover. That would have been Glover. And I just want to understand that was that, was that she would have received the extra duty stipend for seventh and eighth grade basketball head coach no. She was not going to receive the head coach anymore. That would have been Haley Mitchell. She was going to be an assistant in the junior high. She was receiving the uh, head coaching, but when we hired Haley, she was going to be the head coach, and Coach Young would be moved to an assistant, is my understanding. And then she was going to pick up a track. This is an added. She was going to pick up an assistant junior high track. That's an add to her to help offset the, um, since we no longer offer slow pitch softball. Okay, my understanding is that she was asking that she was short 97.50, which means that she would be She's still going the to be short, head yes. coaches, the head coaches in both positions, but where we gave that to some, Glover gave that to somebody else, right? Yes. And so has that been communicated to her yes. prior to that she's not prior to doing this. that? Okay. Is she still going to be short? There's where the conversation between Mr. Glover and the other. I don't so know anymore. Many of these are discussions and with Mr. Glover that were discussions or uh, agreements that don't we don't know the answer to. Correct. Okay. Um, we'll have to talk to the two people that were actually involved in the conversation. Okay. I'll end on that on the fact that just so everybody understands what the board is doing is that in January we made it known to Mr. Glover that we are not going to add any new positions based on where we're at. That is why there are positions that have been presented that the board has declined. It is not that the board doesn't want that, it is that they, there was no authorization. And then on the extra duty, we made it known that we do not want an increase in extra duty and the extra duty was not provided because we couldn't vote on it and when we received it in August, the extra duty was raised to another $20,000. And so the board has now become that we don't have an option but to make hard decisions because that is not being fulfilled to our requests. So as you guys go through these, I want you to understand that we have a potential $9 million short in our, discuss in our budget and that that money needs to be allocated very responsibly and that that, <clears throat> that if it takes all of us to go through that, I will, I will command, I think that uh, in the discussions that I have not had a discussion with everyone else, but in the discussion with Coach Roof, he's been a class act. And he even was willing to take on the uh, extra duty, not the extra duty, he was willing to take on the driver's ed, even having these issues. And so I think people like that are, should be commended. And uh, I wanna make sure that whatever we're providing, we're keeping our word. So as we go back and look at those, are, are you proposing that we just get all this Table it. Table it and get a get a get a modified amended extra duty list okay. for us to approve with you know hopefully Mr. Glover will be able to provide some guidance on that also. Yes. We we just can't do that. And if we can figure that out that that there are repercussions for our decisions, we need to we need to try and make sure that we can solve these to where people can uh, can get what they're supposed to have because it's really putting the board in a bad situation. I'll make a motion that we table item L. Friday. Friday. Mm -hmm. Till Friday, I second. And we will be, for the people that are waiting to sign their contracts, we're looking that we will have this an, an answer to them by Friday, right? Yeah, that's our goal. I'm good with that. All those in favor, motion passes. Discussion, possible action for the following policies. One, CKAH, two, CKAHP, 2024, three, DBCA, four, DHAC, five, EG. Can I make a motion that we approve items one through 16? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll second. All those in favor? 
motion passes. Principal's report, I guess, today. Okay. Um, can you start with I will. Okay. Okay. Um, our softball girls are 17 and 3. I don't have a lot, but just so I thought I'd focus on sports. Uh, they won against Chisholm today, but they're 17 and 3, having an outstanding year this year. So we're, we're proud of them. Also, um, our, uh, I was going to read what uh, Coach Seifert sent today, if I can find it. So um, Wyatt and Connor uh, on the boys cross country have been running well. Girls are getting stronger uh, each meet. And um, Scout, Lily, Harper, and Terry Ann have placed at every meet. So that's, going, that's what's going on in cross country. Um, also, I wanted to spotlight a little bit of ag. So Kingfisher Fall County Fair, Champion and Reserve, Doe Goat, and Champion Goat. Weather shown by senior Colton Burns. Reserve Champion, Goat Weather, shown by sophomore Savannah Hardison. Livestock judging team started this year, fourth overall, finished senior division in Coffeeville Interstate Fair, and has been practicing preparation for the Tulsa State Fair. Kingfisher FFA Parents Club, with support of our FFA, just sold $40,000 of blue and gold and the percentage of those sales are going back to the parents club and continue to support our students. Many students are completing projects that will be evaluated and put on display at the upcoming Oklahoma State Fair in Oklahoma City. The chapter had three annual back to school bashes August 12th as well as the chapter office retreat on August 5th. Other than that we're just getting, getting into the routines. Um, at the junior high, like John was saying, we're getting into the routines as well. Um, our seventh grade has really fit in well here and adjusted to junior high. Um, our sub girls softball struggling a little bit, but they're they're finding their way. We can get them to uh, put together all their all. The innings, they'll be fine. It seems like they'll start off really well, and then have a bad inning, or they'll they'll won't start off very well, and then finish strong. So they're figuring it out. We played um, Mount St. Mary's in football last week, um, and then this week, tomorrow, our softball girls are here playing Weatherford. Um, Football will be in Clinton on Thursday. Softball will be at Thomas on Thursday. So they're, we're just getting into it, starting with uh, football. Um, for the queue, um, new the district, new school year. Uh, everything is new, but I think that we kind of and a lot of our kinks worked out and things are going really well. I got the car lying down. Time is less than 20 minutes, and so I think that, that makes some people very happy out there in my yellow vest in the morning. Um, but things are going well. I think our fourth graders are adjusting to being an upper elementary instead of elementary school, which was a big deal, uh, working their lockers and things like that. So it's been a good start to the school year. I have been really, really pleased. Um, our kids are fantastic. Okay, Heritage. Big thing, the AC units are going in, so we are excited. Um, they're working over the weekends um, and the evenings, so that's all going pretty well. Um, we have a fundraiser that's going on, and it's almost over. We are working for a playground shade. We all kind of talked and voted, and kids are hot, and so they wanted a, a big shade on the playground. And so that's one of the things that we're working for. Um, one of the new things that we implemented this year is um, we have a student that does the announcements in the morning. And so that's done, been going very successfully. And so they do the announcements and 
We also implemented character traits like Gilmore's been doing, and so we kind of mimicked off of them. And during those, during the announcements, they announce those character traits, and then I give a prize for the, the student that has shown in each class that character trait for the week. And so um, we're just trying to you know build better character um, in our students at Heritage. So that's something that's kind of new and it's been going really well. And then um, this week, finally, um, what used to be called the RSA, it's called SRA now, they um, have announced that um, AMERA is going to be the state assessment that um, is going to be paid for by the state. And so they finally announced that that's going to be what they'll be using. So we're under the gun to get that, that done and get all of our assessments done for our kiddos, our screeners. And um, so Miss Redwine is Sheila has been diligently working and calling the state department and getting everything coordinated so shout out to her she's done a good job so um everything else is going pretty well i mean we're just hanging in there so okay. <coughs> for gilmore same thing we're getting into the swing of things things seem to be going well um we are so thankful to have all wings open this year at the start of the year so it's amazing when you don't have that and how much you forget, you know, how you really need every little bit of space that you have. So we're so thankful for that. Our teachers work so hard to get moved back into their wing and um, we just, it's going really well. And we're thankful to have what has been completed thus far. It looks really amazing. Um, like uh, Ms. Meyer said, we are also, we all are, have the fundraiser going on. Um, it's gonna be uh, finishing up this week. Like last year, I think we just spoke about the dogs. They um, earn these little keychains. So this year, they're the wild things. And so they're all these different little animals. And they're a little keychain, and it's a really big deal. So it's a, it's a great incentive for them. So um, as she stated, we're also going to be starting our benchmark testing soon. Um, yes, it has been a big ordeal waiting on um, the state to announce the new screener platform, which um, our littles, we're still going to continue to use STAR since we still have it. And um, it's going to take quite a bit with the other platform. So it's going to involve um, uh, headsets with microphones and it's just a lot of things that have to be put into place to be ready for that. So um, I know, like you said, Mrs. Redwine is working really hard on that. Uh, our reading specialist, Mike Hensley, has also been, they've both been in contact with the State Department trying to figure out what the new platform is. So, um, let's see, I really, that's it for Gilmore. Proposed executive session to discuss the employment and compensation of the following positions for the 2024-2025 school year, discussion of which disclosure would violate confidential ad requirements as state or federal law is authorized by 25 OS 307 B1. Certified personnel, rising stars coordinator at Gilmore and Heritage, evaluation and performance review of the superintendent, two support personnel, daycare workers, paraprofessionals at Heritage, and a bus driver. I'll, uh, I'll make a motion to convene into executive session. I'll second it. All those in favor. The Kingfisher Board of Education met an executive session on May 9, 2024. Board members consisting of Charles Walker, Carly Crane, then Brad Whitrock went into executive session at 7.58 p.m. and returned to open session at 8.59 p.m. The matters as listed on the board agenda were considered in executive session. No other matters were discussed. No board action was taken in executive session. Discussion, possible action on the recommendation for employment of certified personnel for the 2024-2025 school year. Morgan Falkowitz, Rising Stars Coordinator at Gilmore and Heritage. I so move. I'll second it. 
All those in favor? Motion passes. Discussion, possible action on the recommendation for employment of support personnel for the 2024-2025 school year. Rochelle Butts, daycare worker, Deborah Barr, daycare worker, Laney SB Pair, professional heritage for Susanna Copeland, bus driver. I'll make a motion to approve item S as listed one through four. Second. All those in favor? Those opposed? Motion passes. Resignations.